We are now joined by number seven ranked women's bantamweight, Yana Kunitskaya. Yana, thank you very much for joining us today. Hi, thank you. And we'll take our first question from Jay Anderson with Cage Side Press. The line is open. Hey, thanks very much. And Yana, welcome back. Uh, this fight obviously was supposed to happen originally back in August. Um, you know, she was removed from the card. You wind up beating her replacement. Were you glad to get this matchup back, given you've trained for her once already? Yeah, you know, I was ready for any opponent. We didn't ask UFC for any, like, specific name, but I'm really happy that uh, they give me opportunity back. I'm very happy that I have tough opponent and big challenge, and it makes me very excited. And just give us your thoughts on uh, Ketlin as an opponent. What sort of uh, danger does she pose? Uh, you know, she's very well rounded, and uh, I prepare for like a tough fight and for every aspect of the game. But I think uh, her game plan will be to put me down, and we prepare for this. And where do you think a win here would leave you? Because uh, that would be a couple in a row, and Amanda Nunez seems focused on 145, and it, it seems as if if you can make a big statement at 135, it could be an opportunity. You know, I'm not thinking uh, like uh, over this fight in like future. I'm so focused on Caitlin, and uh, it's my now number one priority. And next day after fight, we'll sit and think where we go after this. And one more, uh, you know, and this is maybe a, a further in the future kind of question, uh, not immediate, but I mean, when you came into the UFC, it was the title shot against Cyborg at 145 where you'd fought earlier in your career, and obviously you came back down to bantamweight, but would you ever consider going back to 145 in future? You know, I feel pretty confident in 135, making weight uh, very easy. Even sometimes uh, it's come to my mind to, to go down to 125, but uh, if it's a big opportunity in 145, good offer, why not? You know, I fought in uh, a lot of different division. I fought in 155, I fought in... Uh, plus 155 is like so big girl, so um, everything have, uh, you know, pluses, and if it's good offer, why not? And actually, you mentioned 125 in there. How big of a cut would that be for you? Is that doable? Yeah, yeah 125 will be like a pretty hard uh, cut, and uh, I will have to work long time, you know, not just for camp. I will have to prepare my body, and uh, it should be like really big reason to do this, to risk my health, you know, not just like any fight, because I feel confident, like feel good in 135, and, uh, mm. you know, and I can't see any reason to move from division, but if it will be like uh, any good challenge, big reason, why not? All right, well, thanks very much for your time, and best of luck on Saturday. Thank you. We'll take our next questions from Martina with In the Cage. Your line is open. Hello, Yana. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Yana, just want to know, um, what's your message? What could be your message for all the female MMA haters? <laughs> hey, you know, I don't want to send any message. I'm not care. <laughs> Okay. Uh, is it good to share love uh, for MMA with your life partner? Yeah, you know, I, I like this thing so much. He very supportive, and uh, I'm trying my best to be supportive too. And um, a lot of things getting much easier, and uh, he motivates me a lot. Uh, I'm, like motivate really every day. And uh, sometimes we need this help, you know, you not uh, wake up every day, 100 pros and ready for training, and you have, you need someone who understand you, who understand hard part, you know, when you're in camp, cutting weight, it's sometimes so tough. We need someone who really understand you and support, and I'm so lucky that I have this, this partner, that I have this thing every day in my life. Uh, do you consider yourself as a real danger for champ Amanda Nunes? Uh, you know, I'm not looking over my fight. I'm not uh, thinking about like the title shot. We're still like not close to to be uh, to be there. Uh, I'm number seven. Uh, Caitlin number six. This fight gonna bring me uh, just uh, maybe one position up. So I'm now focus only on uh, my next opponent. I'm not looking to meet Amanda. You know. Of course. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you. We'll take our next questions from Gabriel Gonzalez. Your line is open. Hello, Yana. How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. 
Uh, Jana, I was wondering, is it more helpful because I know Tiago is has a fight coming up in a few weeks. Is it easier because both of you are kind of training at the same time, or is, the, is it sometimes difficult because you kind of your attention is kind of divided, focus on him and focus on you? Uh, you know, it has some pluses and some minuses, but I think uh, pluses more because we are both in the same routine. Um, both need to eat, you know, healthy, uh, focus on fights and camp. Uh, some minus is that uh, we can't, uh, like, um, uh, support each other, like, in some moments because we need focus on our fights, but we do our best. Uh, we support each other, trying to do uh, camp as uh, smooth as, can, as it can be. And um, good thing is that after, after fights, we can, you know, rest a little, enjoy life, traveling. I think it's a good part, one of the good part uh, from, from this. Talking about the bantamweight division, uh, it, one of the things I notice is that there haven't been too many fighters new to the title picture at 135. You know, Holly Holm has been at the top for a while, um, and, you know, Jermaine Durandamy. Why do you think that the Bantamweight division has not seen too many new women? It feels like compared to the other weight classes, there are not as many new fighters at Bantamweight. Why do you think that is? I, I think because uh, this is uh, first division in UFC, you know, and after UFC open like 125, it's still new. So it's why things changing a lot. Um, I, I think this is the biggest reason. Uh, do you think a win over Ketlin Vieira would put you there to get one of those big fights in the division because she was once right there almost for a title shot too? I'm not looking over this fight. You know, I'm uh, focused only on Ketlin now, so I'm not uh, thinking so, so much where it's going to put me. And uh, I don't want, like, fast way to title shot. I want to take my time. Wherever you see going to put me, uh, any opportunity, I will use it. Uh, my final question, how do you get the victory against Caitlin? You know, we prepare for every part of the game and wherever fight going to be, uh, like in stand-up or in the ground, I will try to finish this fight, or if it will be all three rounds, I will try to show good performance. But I think she's going to try to put me down, and we prepare for this, we prepare for stand-up game. But if we go on the ground, uh, I'm really feel confident there too. Thank you, Yana. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yana. Those are all the questions we have for you today. Thank you.